master, a daughter or a wife. Islam gave her all her rights in her life. A mother, a sister, a daughter or a wife. Islam gave her all her rights in her life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah rahman rahim We ask Allah to send his mercy and blessings on Prophet Muhammad. And we ask Allah to grant us uh, wisdom and knowledge, to keep us on the straight path, to guide us, forgive us our sins and grant us Jannah, inshaAllah. Welcome brothers and sisters to another episode of Women's Issues. And actually this episode is our second episode in our sub-series of Mothers of the Believers. And today we are going to be talking about and learning about our mother, Aisha, may Allah bless her. Now for me, Aisha, may Allah bless her, is, is a wonderful wife. Um, her character really speaks to me. I get quite excited uh, when I'm talking or thinking about Aisha, may Allah bless her. She was blessed by Allah. Allah sent so many blessings upon her from birth until death. She was born to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his best friend, his greatest companion, Abu Bakr. So she was the daughter of Abu Bakr. She grew up, she, she was born a Muslim and she grew up surrounded by such a, a role model and, and companion of Abu Bakr. And then Allah blessed her by marriage to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So not only did she have an amazing father, she then also married the best man ever, Prophet Muhammad, and he loved her. He loved her dearly and she was his favorite. Allah also blessed her by revealing some ayah in the Quran that were related to things that happened to Aisha. So that is a, a massive blessing from Allah. Also, Allah blessed her with an, in, an enormous uh, brain, a, a fantastic ability to retain knowledge and information. And she very rarely ever forgot anything. She just had an amazing, amazing mind. And because of this mind, she was attributed to over 2000 hadith. I mean, again, what, what a blessing from Allah. And the blessings didn't, didn't stop there. Also, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he died with Aisha, in, with his head on her lap, in her home. He didn't die with one of the companions. He didn't die with one of the other wives. He didn't die in the masjid. He died with Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her. Then also Allah blessed her by taking her life, ending her life in the blessed month of Ramadan. Allah didn't bless Aisha with children but he blessed her with the status of being the mother of believers. Again, the blessings from Allah just never stopped from start to finish. Amazing. To learn more about Aisha, let's take a look, look at a clip. Mother, a sister, a daughter or a wife, Islam gave her all... Ibn Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, among her unique characteristics is that she was the dearest of the wives of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him. To him, as was reported from him in Bukhari and elsewhere, it was said, O Messenger of Allah, which of the people is most beloved to you? He said, Aisha. It was asked, and among men? He said, her father. Also among her unique characteristics is that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did not marry any other virgin apart from her. Also among her unique characteristics is that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did not receive revelation in the bed of any other wives apart from hers. Also among her unique characteristics is that when Allah revealed the ayah commanding the Prophet, peace be upon him, to give his wives the choice, he started with her and gave her the choice first. He said, you do not have to hasten until you have consulted with your parents. She said, do I need to consult my parents concerning this? I choose Allah and his messenger and the home of the hereafter. 
The rest of his wives followed her example and said the same thing. Also among her unique characteristics is that Allah declared her innocence of that which the people of the slander, Ahlul Ifiq, accused her of and revealed words concerning her innocence that are recited in the mosques of the Muslims until the day of resurrection. Allah himself bore witness that she is one of the good women and promised her forgiveness and a goodly provision. He, may he be glorified, stated that what was said about her in the slander was ultimately good for her. In the end, it was not bad for her and did not do any harm to her status. Because throughout this, Allah raised her status and her innocence is mentioned among the people of heavens and earth, which is an incomparably good thing. And also among her unique characteristics is that the greatest Sahaba, when they were confused about some matter of religion, they would consult her and would find the knowledge they were seeking with her. Also among her unique characteristics is that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, died in her house, on her day, in her arms, and he was buried in her house. May Allah be pleased with our mother Aisha. May Allah bless our mother and unite her with the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the highest degrees of paradise. Well, as we can see in the clip, she had just so, so many wonderful characteristics and so many blessings, as I was saying, from Allah. The thing that I loved really about Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, is that she was very playful. You know, she was, she was young when she married Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And so she was very playful and he allowed her to be playful. He allowed her that the joy to, he ran with her, he played with her, he raced with her. Um, he included her in his life and in everything. He also took her on journeys. He didn't keep her and, and she chose, she wanted to go because she was curious. She was a very curious young girl. And this really appeals to me because kids, most kids are curious, but she was curious in a different way. She wanted the knowledge. She wanted to learn about Islam. And this is, you know, with Allah giving her the magnificent brain that she had for memorizing, for remembering, that she was able to take and absorb all the information that was given to her. So she was a very curious, uh, curious woman, uh, particularly girl. She was also quick witted. And all of these things combined made her very, very special and unique. And of course, later in life, she was very, very generous. She was very generous to the poor and she would give everything that she had. She was also a really strong advocate and the best advocate to speak up for the truth. So if something wasn't right, she would put it right. She, and she knew that whatever she was saying was going to be right because of the knowledge that she had. So she gave very, very good advice, very true advice. And she was always in support and in search of the truth and wanting to share that. She's an amazing, role model and unfortunately as we've said in other pro in other episodes that the role models of today are the those on television in social media but here we've got an amazing role model that our young girls our daughters should be looking up to to see that they've got that playful side they can be girls they can have fun but also that the knowledge that they gain can be immense and can change the world. If they have the knowledge, if they study, if they learn, they can make a massive difference in maybe just their life, but in their family's lives, it can touch the world. They can have a, le a leaving, Im they can leave a massive impact in f on future generations, just like Aisha did. We've got another clip, let's take a look. Mother, a sister, Islam gave her all her rights in her life A mother, a sister, a daughter or a wife Islam gave her all her rights in her life Islam gave her all her rights in her 
Well, we, as we could see in the clip, she's just she's an amazing woman, absolutely amazing woman, and one that we should be looking up to. We sh as I said, sh we should be encouraging our daughters to learn about this amazing woman. And also, we can, we can take things, we can learn from each of the different wives, their different characteristics. And Aisha, as we have seen, just has an, a, a lot of characteristics that we can all take something from. Her kindness, her generosity, her knowledge, her striving for the truth, um, her dedication, her playfulness, her curiosity. All of these things that we can try and learn from and, and know that it's okay for us as women to have these qualities as well and we should be striving for them. All right, brothers and sisters, we're going to take a short break. I will see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum. A mother, a sister, a daughter, or a wife. Islam gave her all her rights in her life. A mother, a sister, a daughter, or a wife. Islam gave her all her rights. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back brothers and sisters. And I'm delighted to introduce our guest for today's program, who is Sheikh Walid Basumi, Basuni, sorry, apologies, uh, who is an Islamic scholar, a scholar. Assalamu alaikum brother, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and wassalam. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. It's an honor to have you with us today. Thank you for taking the time. The honor is mine and uh, thank you for having me in your show. And I would like also to thank and welcome all your viewers. Thank you. Now, in the program today, we're talking about Aisha. May Allah bless her and be pleased with her. Um, something that ha comes up quite often with uh, particularly non-Muslims and people who are looking to criticize Islam is the age that Aisha married Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, she was very young, I believe she was nine when, when she married. Um, and of course, in today's society, that is not acceptable at all. So what can we do to educate people on this particular point in terms of, you know, it being acceptable at that point in society, at that time in the past? Uh, first of all, I would like to start by uh, stating the fact that it is uh, not fair and it is unacceptable that we uh, look at uh, just one particular point in the Prophet's life and relationship with Aisha, which is the issue of her age. And we forget about everything else in the Prophet ﷺ's life and Aisha's life and the nature of the relationship between both of them. Uh, I think that's a distraction. And, and it is something that I, I'm glad that you said that this is an issue it should be dealt with and put in its limit, but it should take its limit and, and size and it should not be the focus point when we come, uh, when we talk about Aisha or when we talk about her relationship with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, because the picture is so beautiful, and we would be very, it would be very unfair, and we'd be really missing the point if this became the point of our focus. And Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa taught us through his relationship with Aisha radiallahu anha how a gentleman uh, should be, and how a, um, a loving husband uh, should be, and how a patient. Uh, uh, he must be, and how a great wife she was, and how important is this relationship to be built on trust, respect, and the role that she played, and, that, and the support that he gave her, and we might talk about this later on. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was praised and, and, uh, and admired by 
Muslim and non-Muslim alike. Uh, and that leads me to say that this issue of Aisha's age, and he married her at a very young age, as you said, for our Western civilizations and, and 21st century, that sounds so wrong or awful. But we have to take consideration that this is, has to do a lot with our influence as culture. Today, if I tell you, marry a girl who is 12 years old, 13 years old, that's just not 50 years ago. It was very common and acceptable, you know, in, a, in Western uh, society. And the age of 10 and 11 and 12 was con commonly accepted in many uh, cultures. And they don't consider that an abuse or result of abuse or relationship. Today, yes, our culture, the way we are, the way we grow, the education that we receive, the way we... we we interact with each other's society, I believe that this was not right and correct. But whenever we want to study history, it's so important for us to go back on time and look forward. But we don't look backwards to the history. We'll never give justice to history. Today, the United Nations and many nations actually, uh, many nations, sorry, uh, define uh, uh, anyone under the age of 18 consider a child, okay? And when you look at before, you find people on the age of 13, 14 in battlefield, working, earning, <laughs> starting a family, uh, uh, you know, leading armies and all these things. Uh, nobody will say today, oh, this was abused. This is being called us heroic and, and, you know, heroes and, and great uh, civilizations and great kings and, and Caesars and, uh, and uh, rulers. Uh, this interesting, uh, it is very interesting to know that this point was only raised by modern society as something against the Prophet ﷺ. But in the old days, the kuffar of Quraysh and the hypocrites and the enemy of Islam and Muhammad so on, were looking for anything to accuse the Prophet ﷺ with. And they never used this as a point of accusation because they know it's not. Also, when they say that he married this young girl, what's the point that they try to? Is that to say his character, uh, basically to attack his character traits, to say he's a type of womanizer, paraphile, or even something like that? Look at the Prophet's life. Mm. There's, there is no pattern to support such claim yes. in the Prophet's life at all. Uh, as a, a contrary, the way he married his wife, the, 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 the nature of his marriage is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It shows the complete opposite. There's not somebody's looking for opportunities. Actually, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had many opportunities. The people of Mecca said, we bring you all women of all age, all kind, if you want. He said, no. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh said, ma ma Rasulullah, the Prophet didn't die, and he was having, as a wife, any one of the women who offer herself for him. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that he is allowed to marry uh, if a woman gave herself to him. And that's for the Prophet only or for, can apply to some other uh, people after him. This is not the issue. But the issue is, even though many women came to say, Allah, I want you to marry you and I give you myself. He did not accept that. He did not take any one of these women ever, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Uh, uh, also take in consideration that Aisha radiallahu anha, by the way, she was, her hand, she was engaged. Uh, someone before the Prophet asked for her hand, which is the son of al Mutaim ibn Adi. And, and that's very clear uh, uh, in the history. That's why Abu Bakr radiallahu anha did not say yes uh, to the Prophet uh, uh, proposal. He, he, he actually, to be very honest, the Prophet did not even propose to Aisha. Khawla bint Hakim, she came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, I have two women for you. You know, I would like to ask for their hands for you. I want to get married after his wife Khadija passed away. And we know that he was only married to Khadija at that time. Uh, so she suggested to Sauda and Aisha. And she said, I want to marry you to the one that you love the most, which is Abu Bakr. Mm. So that was an offer came from Khawla. And Abu Bakr told her, wait, because the son of a Muslim Ali asked for her hand. Let me talk to him first, mm -hmm. see if he's still serious. So that shows you that this is not something strange. This is not something weird. Yes. You know, this is not something that like has no uh, 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 any uh, basically 
uh, uh, previous examples. Mm. Also, the history proven that her marriage of the Prophet ﷺ was nothing but success. Mm. You will never find a single time or a single narration shows or stated or anything that that give an indication that Aisha felt abused, or her father, or her mother, or her family mm -hmm. felt that she was abused, taking advantage of. Yeah. As a matter of fact, she praised the person the most. So this is the case. What's your problem today? That you coming to speak about her or about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Mm -hmm. That's just a, a hypocrisy and animosity, and I call it a distraction. We're not going to buy it. For. The final point, maybe also worth mentioning. Uh, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, like all his brothers uh, uh, of the prophets before him, their dreams are true. Whenever Allah gives them a dream of something, it means it's an order from Allah SWT. That's one of the way Allah communicates things to the prophets and messengers and give them order through dreams. Only prophets have this quality. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyid Muslim said, uh, fil manam I was I saw you in my dreams three nights in the Bisasalam saying to Aisha, Ja'ani Bikil Malak fi uh uh the the angel brought you uh, while you are dressed in a very silky type of material. And they said, This is your wife. And I said, Can you show me her face? And every time he showed this woman's face, it was your face, Ya Aisha. Mm. So that also shows you. That in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married her based on a wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, min If this is an order from Allah, Allah will make it happen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, all this and, and, and many other points to show you that this marriage is, is, is not something of any form is considered abuse or anything. That's a culture difference. And that's why the ulama have no problem today, Muslims, to say, that yes, if a woman is nine years old, we're not going to let her get married. Mm. Not because the, because of the culture different, because of the nature of our girls today. I have daughters and I see mm. them. So I see my wife, uh, you know, uh, and my mother. My mother got married in the age of 15 or 16. You know, my daughter mm. who's 15 today can't mm. get married. My grandmother married in the age of, you know, 13. I'm not going to be willing. Not because she's abused, it's because the, the nature of the mm -hmm. culture and the way we are raised are different today. When you look at Abdullah ibn Amr al As, he's the only the difference between Abdullah ibn Amr al As and his father was eleven years only. Brother, but sorry, just, sorry, can I? Sorry, culture. brother, I just need to to cut you short there. I'm very, very sorry for interrupting you. Right. I I okay. want to continue listening. You've got amazing answers and knowledge there. I I really want to continue, but unfortunately, I'm being told that we have to uh, end the segment. So um, I really look forward to, inshallah, having you back on the program again, um, so that we can talk more about this and and other topics. But I'd like to thank you very much for your yeah, your I, your I, knowledge. I really, I really appreciate that, and I hope that. Our conversation in future be an Aisha of Alana about her relationships, about her contribution to uh, her relationship as a wife and her contribution to society. Yes. And that's a role model that our sisters today need to know. What's the role that they can play in society and a leadership role like Aisha of Alana did? Yes, absolutely. It's very important that we cover that. So inshallah, we'll get you back on the program to do that one as well. So thank you again, brother, for your time. It's, uh, it's been an honor to have you and uh, may Allah bless you. Uh, Salam alaikum. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, we could see there from, from Sheikh Walid's uh, beautiful answers and knowledge that uh, Aisha was an amazing woman and that there wasn't any problems with the her getting married at a young age. It was all by the wahi of Allah. Um, Allah wanted it. It happened. And, you know, she's she's been a fantastic role model and continues to be a fantastic role model for all women around the world. So we've come to the end of the program. And until next time, stay safe. Uh, look after yourself, love yourself, and always remember Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A mother, a sister, a daughter, or a wife. Islam gave her all her rights in her life. A mother, a sister, a daughter, or a wife. Islam gave her all her rights in her life.
Islam gave her all her rights in her life.